Hello and welcome to ExcelMasterSeries.com. Today we're going to show how to create the Google Website Optimizer with statistics in Excel. Now, the Google Website Optimizer is a built-in tool in Google AdWords. It's commonly used for split testing uh, Google AdWords landing pages. And the way that works is a visitor clicks on your pay-per-click Google AdWords ad and it's directed to a landing page. The Website Optimizer allows you to create different variations of one landing page and then evenly distributes the clicks to the ver different variations. It then calculates the probability that one landing page variation converts better than the other one does and uses a statistical hypothesis test to do that. And that's what we're going to create here in Excel. But let's take a look at the typical output of the Website Optimizer. We're looking at four different landing page variations. We're going to compare the first one, the original, 684 conversions from 2,417 clicks with Variation 1, 750 conversions from 2,578 clicks. Optimizer calculates that there's a 73.2% chance that Variation 1 converts better than the original. And we're going to duplicate that hypothesis test in Excel. So let's take a look at our Excel spreadsheet that you're going to build right here. And we're going to plug the numbers in here. 684 conversions from 2,417 clicks on the original landing page. And Variation 1 has 750 conversions from 2,578 uh, clicks and we run our hypothesis test shows that there's a 73.2 percent chance that variation one landing page converts better than the original. Now let's take a look at the optimizer output and see to confirm that that is what they have as well. Yes it is. 73.2 percent chance that variation one converts better than the original. We're creating a one-tailed, two-sampled, unpaired hypothesis test of proportion. And let me briefly explain what each one of those means. A hypothesis test of proportion means that each sample has only two possible values. A visitor converts or they don't. A one-tailed test is more stringent than a two-tailed test. It determines whether something is actually bigger and not just different than something else. Two samples. Both samples are taken simultaneously. There's no original sample data. And unpaired, both samples are independent of each other. So let's take a look at our spreadsheet and see how we created this uh, Excel spreadsheet. Here's the conversion rate. We see there are two different inputs. Uh, the conversion rate is simply the number of conversions over the number of clicks. Those are the two inputs. And we can see for the original what is the formula for that. In variation one landing page, just about the same. The conversion rate is one user input, the number of conversions over the number of visits. Those are the two user inputs times 100. And we're tracing the precedence so you can verify the income, the, the inputs for each cell. And that's a very important thing to do. Uh, it's a hypothesis test. We have P1 and P2. P1 is a probability of success in each sample, and that would be the conversion rate. P1 is the conversion rate for the original, and P2 is the conversion rate for variation one landing page, P1 and P2. And if you have P1 and P2, you need to calculate Q1 and Q2. Q1 is a probability of a no success on one sample, and that would simply be 1 minus P1. And Q2 is 1 minus P2. We're tracing the precedence. That's how you do it, to see the inputs of, your, of each one of your cells. Very important thing to do when you're creating spreadsheets like this. And next thing to do, we're going to verif verify number of samples, N1. That would simply be the number of clicks for the original landing page, 2417. And N2 is the number of clicks for variation 1 landing page, 2578. K38, that cell. Now we have to create a P weighted, and I'll explain why we do that later, but here's the formula in Excel for doing that. We have to create a weighted P. There's the formula. I'll derive this and I'll show you why we need a weighted P, but here's how you do it in Excel. And if we're going to calculate a weighted P, we have to calculate a weighted Q. Weighted Q is simply 1 minus weighted P. You see the inputs right there, trace precedence. That's the only input for that one minus weighted P. Now we're going to calculate the standard deviation. That's the standard part of a hypothesis test. And here's the formula for calculating sample standard deviation. There are the inputs. And we can see the formula for that. Next thing we have to calculate is the, the actual value of the distributed variable, P1 minus P2. And I'll explain this in a derivation of what we're doing here. But the absolute value of P1 minus P2 is right here. Now, 
what a hypothesis test does, it takes an absolute value, it, it takes the value of distributed variable and depending on how far from the mean on the normal curve is, the area under the normal curve from the actual value all the way to the other end of the left tail is the probability of success. And we'll go into that. Now we have to calculate a z-score. And Excel, z-score is simply the absolute value of the variable over the sample standard deviation. Just one over the other. And now we calculate the area under the curve which equals the probability that they are different. And I'll explain this to you during the derivation, but those are the inputs right there. And if we take a look at that, that's an if-then-else statement. It determines whether we're doing a left-tailed test or right-tailed test. In this case, it's going to be a left-tailed test because P2 is greater than P1. The conversion rate from landing page variation 1 is greater than the conversion rate from landing page original. And this if-then-else statement allows you to make that determination of which test, whether a left-tailed or a right-tailed test, to do that. Okay. So now let's take a look at the derivation of this whole thing. I'm, a, I'm going to go through this quickly. If you'd like to take a look at this in more detail, you can download the Excel Statistical Master, and I'll show you how to do that at the end of this video. And this is a hypothesis test. We have uh, P1, the probability of success in one trial, that's conversion rate of uh, the original landing page, and P2 is conversion rate of the second landing page. Q1 is always 1 minus P1. And we have to create a null hypothesis test. In this case, we're hypothesizing the null hypothesis test that both conversion rates are the same, that there's no difference. One way of doing that is hypothesizing that P1 minus P2 equals 0. And the hypothesis test determines what's going to be graphed on the normal curve. Basically, what we're doing here is we're graphing a normal curve, and then we're taking actual value of the variable. At that point, all of the area under the curve, all the way out to the other tail end, tells you what is the probability that those two things are different. And right now, we're calculating the variance, variance of P1 minus P2. And in statistics, when you calculate the sum or differences of two different variables, it equals the sum of the variances of each one of those. So that's what we just saw there. And what we need is a standard deviation. That's actually the square root of the variance. So we're plugging in formulas from above right into that standard deviation formula there. Calculate the standard deviation. We use standard deviation to calculate the z-score. Now, if we're hypothesizing that P1 equals P2, we could substitute a common P and a common Q in for P, P1, P2. And if you see that red P and red P and red Q, those are common P's and Q's. But what we have to take into account is P1 and P2 have different sample sizes, different numbers of clicks. So we have to take a weighted average of P1 and P2. And here's how we get the P weighted. If you remember when we were doing the Excel formulas, there was a P weighted. Well, this is why. And if you have P weighted, you have to calculate Q weighted. So plugging in the formulas for P weighted and Q weighted into the standard deviation formula, now we have to calculate Z score. That would be the absolute value of P1 minus P2. And we're determining whether this is a left tail test or a right tail test. Now, the advantages of using this uh, website optimizer in Excel is that uh, we don't have to set it up in, in Excel and we can use it for any type of marketing. Whether you're using a direct mail campaign or any sort of marketing, you can plug that right in there. So if you'd like to be an Excel statistical master and really know how to do this stuff, this is in chapter 9 of this four, four manual series. For only $19.95, you can download this whole four manual series, 400 pages of easy step-by-step -step instructions at www.excelmasterseries.com. Okay, thank you very much and goodbye.